gonna be on here for a few minutes. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but uh, here we go. So yeah, I got the cut. I got the cut. I went on ahead and did it. Summertime is about to hit. I shaved it all down. I'm good. I mean, people are like, man, are you serious? You got rid of the fro-fro? Yeah, I got rid of the fro-fro. But today, we're gonna have this conversation in regards to the ancient free uh, Moorish rights, ancient free Moorish rights. And also, we're gonna talk about a United General Grand Masonic Congress. Uh, what does it look like and how can you get in contact uh, in order to be a part of this Congress, uh, this United General Grand Masonic Congress. So, uh, first of all, I want to greet everybody who's coming in. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I want to share with you my experiences this past weekend in Atlantic City. I had an awesome time with the Kings of Kings Grand Lodge and the Queens of Queens Grand Chapter. Then the King Grand Matron, Honorable uh, Raymond Edwards Grand Master. Uh, he's also the sovereign. Uh, Grand Master for the dual jurisdiction of the Moorish rights. So we're going to talk about that and uh, definitely we're going to get this in. We're going to get this work in for a few minutes. I'm still here today. Just got back in town last night as a matter of fact. Man, what a trip. Uh, what a time. What a fellowship uh, that I had with the brothers from various jurisdictions. This is like seven different jurisdictions that came out to support uh, Brother Edwards in his grand session. And it was indeed a pleasure to be amongst those seven different Masonic jurisdictions that came out. Big shout out to the Sovereign Grand Commander, uh, Brother uh, Gregory Thomas, who came out to support along with the Grand Master from Virginia and several, old, and several other Grand Masters from several other jurisdictions that came out to support this brother in his endeavor. Uh, it was indeed a, man, I, I really don't know what to say. I was so blessed to be amongst those brothers and listen to the lectures that was given, especially the, uh, the ancient Moorish rite. Uh, I would tell you this, as a brother of the Masonic craft, the Moorish rites uh, fits right in. And I know a lot of people are wondering, how does the Moorish rite fit right in to the Masonic order? Based upon my my now experience, I can tell you that it does. I can tell you that if you go back and read your own Masonic ritual, you will find how it fits in. And I would tell you that it was one of the most beautiful setups as far as large structures that I've seen, and I've seen some. And it had its own flavor to it. And I would tell you that the, the rites of passage to become a, a Moorish rite is indeed a rites of passage. If you don't mind walking the plank, if you don't mind clitching <laughs> and holding, it's, it's, it has its own experience. Um, and I enjoyed it, it taught me a lot. And, and, and this, is a, this is a growth thing. I think this is something new that's on scene right now because it expands to me in regards to Freemasonry, it does, and <clears throat> and that right, that 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 rights, uh, in itself enlightens me and add to the concept of Freemasonry. That's what it does for me. Now, other brothers may have their own experience with it. Other brothers may say something else, and I get it. But for me, that's what it does for me. And and I, I man, it's oh, it was beautiful. And I'm gonna say this here. The Queens of Queens Grand Chapter, you really did an outstanding job. That Sisters of the Order, your that play that you put on, breaking down those five herons of the order, that was fantastic. I've never in my life seen anything so pleasant, so heartfelt, so warming that breaks it down. You know, um, it, it was it was definitely beautiful. Uh, Brother Josh, if you're on right now, you watch me. Yes, I'm going to be available later on today. Uh, but, you know, with that being said, back back to my topic, uh, to the Queens of Queens, man, I, I want to say that I enjoyed myself. I really did. The sisters, the brothers of the craft, you guys rolled out the red carpet. You guys showed what hospitality is really all about. 
uh, it, it, it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. And, and I want to say that. I want to say to uh, the Honorable Ray Edwards, great session, brother. You keep, you keep doing what you're doing. I know we're not going to all get along. I'm not even concerned with that. My, my thing that I'm concerned with is growth. Growth is what I'm concerned with. And I see what you're trying to do. And that, that may be your calling, to, to make this thing happen that way. There's only one way you can get this right. Uh, and you're going to have to go see <laughs> Raymond Elwes to get it. That's the only way you're going to get it. And, and I can appreciate that. And it's not a copycat right. It is the legitimate right uh, with its own atmosphere, with its own take, with its own everything, its own rituals. It, it owns itself. You know, it, this rights of the ancient Moor, uh, Moorish right, it owns itself. It, it doesn't, it, that's, that's what I like about it. That's what I enjoyed about it. That's the fellowship I got from the brothers there, from the grand masters who came to participate, who gave their heartfelt warming uh, 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 thoughts about the session. I got that. Oh man, we, we met, it was, we met, we had educational session. Uh, it was lovely. It was indeed a lovely time to be amongst the brothers of the craft and the sisters of the order. It was, it was great. I, made a, I met a lot of great sisters. Uh, we talked about everything. Uh, we did. We, we talked about everything. The sisters know who they are. We talked about everything. And I was learning from them just as well as they learned from me. And this is what it's supposed to be all about. When you go to these various sessions and you enjoy the company of those who are putting it on, you are supposed to learn something from it. Greetings, everybody who's coming on. I'm sharing with you my experience as being a, uh, a part of the Morris Wright under uh, the Honorable Ray Edwards and what he's trying to put together and do. Uh, I'm, I'm sharing this experience because I feel that you know, in different rites and ceremonies, there is an experience that you have. And I can honestly say in this, in this regards to this experience and going through this initiation rite is one I won't forget. <laughs> it is. And I say that with, with a smile. I say that it was, it was, a, a, as I was brought in and welcomed, I, I, I would say that. And, and I appreciate the privacy of the organization as far as you're not going to any, you're going to have to go there to get it. That's it. That's the only way you're going to get it. You got to go there. And I can appreciate that, you know, and I can appreciate how they uh, uh, intertwine with Freemasons from another perspective. I get it. I love the setup. I, I love the way uh, the rights is set up. Uh, it's you know, when I say set up, I'm talking about compared to the Masonic Lodge, the rites, the way it was set up, and the lectures that was given. And I, I enjoyed myself. I had a ball. And now I'm amongst the Moorish rites, uh, a degree that belongs to us. When I say us, I'm talking about the Asiatic, the Asiatic black man that, that, that owns its rites, that, that, that owns its own Masonic ritual, it's its own everything. And, and sometimes you have to, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And this is that way of transforming. I mean, I don't know, if, uh, I, I do know that there are many rights out there. That's what it is. It's, it's a lot of different Masonic rights out here. And I would tell you if you have the experience of receiving various Masonic rights, get it. I have no problem with that. I have none whatsoever. I would encourage you to get the rights, the various rights out here. I would encourage you to get it. I would encourage you to enjoy nature and all that it has to offer. Uh, do that and don't look back. Don't let someone tell you that right is clandestine or that right is this. That's because they don't know the right. They don't understand the rights. They haven't been initiated into the rights, so they, they talk a lot of good game. You know, I, how can this be associated with Freemasonry? You need to take the name of Freemasonry off of it. No, no, you don't. Because to be free is mean one has a choice to go as he come, to go as he choose, and to go and come freely. Masonry means to build, to cement, to construct. So to add Freemasonry onto the ancient 
Morris Wright is dead on to me. From what I got this weekend, it's dead on. So, I mean, I know a lot of people are going to be skeptical and say a whole lot of various things about it because they don't know. People do that. When you don't know something, you talk about it. You talk down to it or you talk up to it when you don't know. Now, based upon my experience and what I do know, I'm going to get all I can out of the Morris Wright. I'm going to learn all I can out of it. And I got a lot of learning to do. I really do. Uh, it's just, it expands upon what I know. And, and you should never, ever stop learning. It expands upon it. It brings a lot of things into focus. It helps one to better understand their journey in Freemasonry from the perspective of selling. <laughs> okay. All right. Discovery, peace, uh, beloved, and welcome to the right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, so, man, it is so much more I can tack on to this. I don't have a lot of time, but I'm going to share with you what I, what I got out of it while I have you here with me. So, my thing is, if you're interested in this right, just reach out to uh, Brother Ray Edwards. Reach out to him. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extension. You know, it's, it's another right to add to the knowledge, the understanding of building and, and, and selling, you know. Uh, how some of the, to me, how do some of the things that we see in masonry uh, bring in more rights? How do you expect those ruffians to leave unless they had to go by the wayfaring man? I'm just throwing those little tad bits out. You have to find out for your own when you become a member. You have to find out some things. You can't get everything from somebody telling you. Some things you're just going to have to experience in order for you to appreciate the rights. And I appreciate the rights. And I got a lot to learn. I ain't going to sit there and say I don't. I know I do. They was throwing out words. I'm like, God damn, okay. I could piece together some of this, but I'm going to have to go get it. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And to the sisters who were there uh, during this festivity as we walked to the uh, the shores, it was a little chilly, but we walked there and we enjoyed each other's company and, and, and the fellowship that we had as we walked to the Atlantic Ocean and, and to see the breeze come in and the waves pounding. Man, some things you have to go and just experience and this is just one of those things. Uh, and to the brothers of the craft who came out to support this and those who was initiated into the right, you know, I'm, I'm quite sure you're going to have to look back upon this experience and, 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 and be able to express and see what you was able to get out of it because we don't always get the same thing out of experiences. And I would say I had a great experience uh, 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 in, in, in this process. It brought me... Uh, to, to with some brothers that I hadn't seen in years. There was brothers there that, I mean, I had literally seen some of these brothers in like three or four years. And we had a great conversation. And and, and really, it, to, to see this and to experience this and to move forward in life knowing that I have this experience that I, I, I'm sharing with you is totally awesome. It's totally awesome. People can say what they want to say, but until you experience for yourself, you'll never know. You'll be like, well, how does this confine, or how does this attach itself to Freemasonry, you know? Look, you have to experience to know. I appreciate that, Tony. I appreciate that. Thank you, Marcus. All right. Who is that? Not. All right, sis, how you doing? I think that's the system. I appreciate you. Yeah, so, so that's the whole thing. Are you coming out here to mess with me? Just saying, man. Look, I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to share with my brothers and my sisters this weekend festivities. And let me tell you this here. Now you know, now you have to know. Raymond L was that DJ you had for that whole weekend? That brother was on fire. <laughs> oh my God. You know, that brother was on fire, man. He, he. Yeah, he did it. He did it the whole weekend. The brunch we had, we had a we had a brunch. Man, that morning brunch was off the chain, brother. Let me tell you. Food like that, oh man, the food, the banquet, oh, it was all good. It was all good. And you know, I I I need my food cooked 
you know, that, that beef, you know, it was kind of, some people like that beef, kind of bleeding a little bit, but I got to have it cooked, done. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But for those who enjoyed it, great. The Simon, I didn't get any of Simon, brother. That was, man, I got there. That Simon was gone. It was gone. You should have had more of that, bro. But, you know, other than that, man, I can't complain about it. I can't complain about it. Now, the next thing I want to bring to your attention is the United General Grand Masonic Congress. If your Grand Lodge is interested in fellowshipping with the United uh, General Grand Masonic Congress, as we have now incorporated that organization in Chicago, Illinois, please reach out to me at John at J G J A F A M at Yahoo.com. I will send you information in regards to being a part of it as a Grand Lodge. Only Grand Lodges can be a part of this. Not single lodges, but Grand Lodges. Okay? And this is not going to cost you any money to be a part of this. But if you're interested, reach out to me. I will get you the information. Uh, we're going to start working on our first national convention here real soon. And if you want to be a part of it, certainly you're welcome to come aboard and fellowship with us. I, you, this is that's going to be another experience. I just want you to think about it. How you going to feel when the ancient free and accepted Masons begin to show strength by uniting and, and working together? How you going to feel? Now, I'm not saying that every Masonic Congress is going to hop on board. I'm not saying that every Grand Lodge is going to hop on board. But I would tell you this. From the various Grand Lodges of the various General, Mas Grand General Grand Masonic Congresses, your sovereignty would not be affected. You can join this, and your sovereignty or your membership to your General Grand Masonic Congress will not be affected, period. Your... Uh, your uh, Grand Master, your uh, uh, sovereignty is what it is, your sovereignty. We're just asking you to fellowship with us under this banner. That's it. That's all we're saying. Come fellowship with us under this banner. And this banner is what we need to unite us who are ancient, free, and accepted masons. That's what this banner does. You know, a lot of people see a lot of things in regards to the Ancient Free and Accepted Masons, all I'm saying is, is that this banner is going to is going to resonate, is going to set us afire, is going to is going to do a whole lot of things for us as a united body. You know, like I said, everybody every every general grand son of Congress is not going to want to participate. But as a single grand lodge, you have a right to participate, and this is not going to be uh uh uh, interfering with your with your General Grand Masonic of Congress or any Supreme Council that you may be a member of, okay? So reach out to me once again at jgjafam uh, at yahoo.com and I will send you the information on that. Also, I have some other information I got to get to some brothers. Please bear with me, work with me as I try to get this information to you. Uh, you know, I do have a full-time job, and I'm pretty active within the craft, so it's going to take me some time to get you some, some information, but I would definitely make it my business to get it to you. What's up, Abdul? How you doing? You are absolutely right and exact. There is much to regain sources and respect maintained. It is most appreciated to hear your acknowledgement of the ancient free Moorish right. Hey, bro. It's a journey. And if you're not up to it, then you need to get off the boat. <laughs> you catch that on the way home. But anyway, you know, so here we go. Here we go. We're about to set sail on a new experience, a new journey. Uh, and it, it's going to be beautiful. I'm looking forward to a beautiful experience. I would tell you this. When I joined the, uh, uh, the sanctuary of the primitive rites, that was another experience. That was another journey I was on. And it took me down a road to a better understanding of the esoteric, esoteric side of Freemasonry with its own level of degrees and, and having an and understanding where these tad bits was left out of Freemasonry, where these tad bits were switched and changed. When you read Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma, the primitive rites uh, uh, 
made and brought that a little bit clearer to me, for me. I can't say what it does for anybody else. So upon and receiving those degrees and having that ritual in my hand, I was able to explore and see things from a different point of view, uh, more so than what I already had. It added to the knowledge that I had. And so that's what these degrees do. They add to what you already have. And it brings you a different experience than what you may have already experienced in the previous degrees. So, that's the beauty. That's what I got. That's where I'm at in my journey. And I'm gonna continue to grow. I'm gonna continue to learn. I'm gonna continue to put forth effort to see about other degrees that are out there and seeing what they're all about, really and truly. I'm, I'm not gonna just sit here and be happy and saying, well, you know what, I got the first three degrees of masonry and that's all there is to it. It's more to it than just that. I'm here to tell you personally, it is more to it than just that. I would tell you to look at it like from, a, from this point of view. When you lay the foundation to build a building and you have 33 floors or you may have 360 floors in that building, once the foundation is laid for that building and, and you go and you take an elevator up to the highest floor of that building and you look out the window, then you can appreciate the landscape and what you see around you. Then you can appreciate the structure and the foundation of the building. You can't appreciate, you can appreciate more than just what you see from a ground level. And that is how masonry works. That's how it works. The first three degrees is beautiful. You go through them and you look around, it's like, wow, I really like this. This is beautiful. You're on the ground floor, the pavement, oh man. And then you go into the middle chambers, you go up into the middle part, you be like, okay, so you can look down on the first degree and you can see its structure and how beautiful it is. And then you go and you knock on the third degree, you see a little bit more. Now as you journey, you go to York right, the Scottish right, you see more because you're looking down at the degrees and seeing how they match up and seeing what they add to your life, to your being, as far as Freemasonry is concerned, be it Scottish Rite or York Rite. And that's how this thing works. That's how it happens. So if you're a brother who have the Primitive Rite degrees and you have 96 and 99 and you're really in tune with that degree work and what they offer you, what they bring to you in Freemasonry, that's a beautiful thing. Because everybody's not gonna have your perspective. They're not. Everybody's not going to have my perspective. They are not. But until you get those degrees, until you are initiated into those degrees of rites of passage, to have the right to operate in those degrees, to, to have that ritual in your hand, you'll just be talking. That's what you're going to be doing. You're just going to be talking. So look, I enjoyed your company today. Everybody who tuned in, please, you know, uh, enjoy Freemasonry and all that it has to offer. Uh, to the sisters of the craft, especially Kings of Kings Grand Lodge and Queens of Queen Grand Chapter of New Jersey. Man, y'all did the damn thing. You, ah, uh, I'm just, I'm still recuperating from an awesome time in fellowship as masonry, as masons should do. You, man, I'm telling you, you should leave your jurisdiction, go see somebody else's jurisdiction. Leave and go out of your Congress and go see somebody else. I'm telling you, and it, it ain't nothing like it. It's a beautiful thing, but most of you probably will never do it. You'll probably never ever do it, and that's okay. That's really all right. It's, it's okay. It's okay to be like. So I'm gonna venture back in, okay. get my day going, start over again. Uh, as I say, I'm not your study guide, but I'm here to help you study. Take care of yourself. Remember, keep your light on. Stay out the bushes. I'll see you. Peace.